is we don't want to go in and go like, oh, it's a conference. We don't want to be seen as the people that are just creating conference junkie Christians that chase the next high, the next encounter, the next conference, and they're not planted in a local church. Um, welcome to Now, a limited series about experiencing revival in our realities. I am Seb. This is Isaac. How you doing? I'm feeling fine, fresh, and ready to go. How's the Peanuts Athletic Club treating Dude, you? It's actually really comfy. Hey, I didn't even know. I don't know what this brand is, but... I'm pretty sure it's... Actually, I don't want to say it because it makes you sound cheap. Anyway, um... It's, it's H- not mine. It's H&M. Is it? Yeah. Wow. They got the good sometimes. Well, yeah. Um, Sponsor will take anything that they can send us. Oh, H and M. I'll take anything free. I don't care. Oh, clothing. Yeah, sure. It's just aren't they like super corrupt? What? Maybe this is like just the work culture getting into my. That. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, um, tangents. Let's jump in. Okay, so today we're talking about um, can a conference bring a revival? Wow, we. We're going for it. It's a good question. I'm, yeah, it is a good question. It's also an intimidating question because we're planning a conference and we're really wanting to sell tickets. And so this might, I don't know, maybe we'll talk people out of it. By <laughs> Can the you end sell of this a time. ticket to a revival is what we're doing with a conference. Well, right? yeah, then there's the monetary aspect as well. <laughs> oh, man. Too, too we're, we're really digging ourselves a hole with this one. I think, okay, so the, the way that this got started was um, probably like two or three months ago, you were sharing with like the YA uh, core team just before a meeting of just some things that like God's been kind of pressing on your heart. And you're like, man, I really feel like there's just something about this time where God's really wanting to awaken his church, mm. really wanting to awaken the Gold Coast. And we just need to pursue God like nothing else. Yeah, exactly. We need to chase after things of God and really go after that. And so it was like a really inspiring moment that he shared with us. And then my immediate thought was like, that's great. Should we stop planning this conference? I, I remember you brought this up. Yeah. <laughs> and you kind of gave like a good response, but I was like, okay, we actually probably should do a deep dive in this. Yep. So I it, like, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's good. Well, it's hard. Okay. Because it's like, for me, I actually wrestled with the idea of even calling this a conference. Mm. Like I, I remember we were having this conversation with a bunch of us and, and it was like a conference, man, the moment you put a conference tag on something, it has this feeling like it has to fit into a certain style or a certain bigness or a certain professionalism Mm. that feels like was anti what we were trying to go after in terms of that organic, desperate heart posture of the thing of the things of God and and calling on heaven in that way. And so um, I did wrestle with that tag. Right. But I mean, call it a conference. Don't call it a conference. Really. It's just a, it's just a, organized gathering of people for one reason right and so i kind of landed on this idea of of the conference probably where i sit because even like uh, sometimes okay as a leader it's like oh we just go oh come to this conference god's gonna move it's gonna be amazing but what we're really trying to do is just market the event so we have a full room Mm. and so that's an easy trap to fall into that i really tried not to do but um which is why i think i love this conference because it ah frick the (laughs) What did you say? Uh, frick. I said frick. Surely that's fine. I don't know. Um, <laughs> He'll edit that out. Yeah. Like, um, um, <laughs> don't edit it out. What was, um, say? what was I saying before that? Uh, so we're talking about like conferences, how they're, we kind of use that as a tagline and try to really pump it up yeah, 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 yeah. in order to get people to come, sure. get people excited. And it's kind of maybe against the the feel of what the spirit's wanting to sure, do. Sure. And, and, and so I think it was like, um, man, do, do we want to call it a conference? Do we not want to call it a conference? Uh, really just to get people together for one reason but I think like wh- where I landed was like with the conference I don't think it ever builds a move of God but it can definitely like boost people towards chasing after God mm. I remember when I've been to those environments where it's just been people together there's been like a unified drive or directional vision uh, I know I've come away and I feel like more than engaging with the schedule or the flow of the conference i've caught something in the spirit of what that event was and so i think where i go is does a conference necessarily like start a revival like i don't think so in the terms of like you don't have to call something a conference in order for that to be like the catalyst for a move of god i mean if we look at like we were talking even before like asbury revival even recently yeah it's like that was literally just like a midweek chapel like it was nothing special. It was nothing over and above. And so uh, I don't think what maybe I'm even chasing from this is not that 
this conference is going to be the thing that now is going to make from that night or that weekend onwards, it's like we're going to keep going for months and months and months and months. But what I'm hoping is that by us coming together, there is something in the DNA of what we're creating those few days for with now conference to be something where people can catch something in their spirit that can inspire them in a greater way to chase after the things of God. And I think that then becomes the catalyst for God moving, not necessarily the event itself. So it's like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, I don't know. I think they just both both work in tandem. Um, and so I think that that's my thing. I don't know. When you've been to conferences before, have you have you noticed the difference in you? Was it yeah. beneficial, not beneficial? Well, that's the thing. I think especially if you've been in church world long enough and you've had gone to conferences you kind of get the whole spectrum of experiences um i've you know had real profound moments of encounter and probably had you know some parts of my calling really clarified in conference scenarios sure and go oh man okay conferences are like the place where god does the miraculous and really does something that he's not going to be able to do in other ways Mm. but then also you go to some and it's like yeah it was good sure like Good content, good speakers, but wasn't, you know, that that moment sure, that we sure. were, you know, told that it was going to be. Um, and then also you do start to have those experiences where maybe you get profound encounters at some very unordinary events. Maybe it's just a regular church service or maybe, sure. you know, it's um, in a small group. And I think as well, we're starting to see that happen more and more in those real ordinary scenarios. Mm. And so I think that's probably where we start to... Uh, I guess we can say we start to demonize conferences sure. because we go, all right, well, God has poured out in like a chapel at Asbury. Mm. So maybe that's the method. Maybe that's the thing that we need to do. We just need to do more chapels. We need yeah. to do more boring sure. events. We need to be more stripped back. Let's get rid of the LED wall. Let's just get, you know, um, whoever on a on an acoustic and then revival is going to happen after that. But then there's also the side of going, well, okay, that's just us now being, once again, married to a method. Yeah, exactly. In the exact same way on whether you're going to do a conference or not. So then I think, yeah, that tension starts to come back in on, okay, is this, uh, should we do a conference? Should we not do a conference? Is it something that's going to be of benefit? Is it not going to be of benefit? And I think as well, maybe perhaps, yeah, your expectations that you've set is clear. That said, there's like still that sense I have is like, man, I actually really hope that yeah. something profound and unexpected sure. happens mm. throughout this and something that we can't actually possibly plan for or orchestrate in ourselves that God actually does do something in it. But yeah, it's like, okay, how, what, what am I willing to be okay with? Like, where do I put my faith? How high do I set my expectations? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we're praying for, right? Is we don't want to go in and go like, oh, it's a conference. We don't want to be seen as the people that are just creating conference junkie Christians that chase the next high or the next encounter, the next conference, and they're not planted in a local church. It's like when you marry like that idea of that over and atop gathering together, and, and especially like it's a young adult thing. So like getting young adults together mm. and inspiring them under the same thing to chase after God, that there's encounter, there's impartation, they're being practically equipped, but they're also in that environment of faith and and just the atmosphere of heaven um, to then be healthy Christians who are planted in the local church. And you get then those uh, spiritual mothers and fathers or those local church pastors that know you can speak into you, solidify calls, bring that out of you. Um, but then marry that with those high mountaintop experiences that usually conferences do attract or things of that nature. Mm. I think it's just a good combo. Um, and I think for me, I'm kind of like the reality is like moves of God have more often than not, at least in my research happened when a group have come together. Mm. Like, like it's very rare for it to just be that one weird person who channels their inner John the Baptist and goes out into Ipswich in the middle of nowhere and uh, puts on weird clothes and just preaches into the airwaves of the world. But, you know, the upper room, it happened, 120 people together. Yeah. So I, I think we, in our modern vocab, use the word conference more as just that tag for coming together. And I think that's really where the power is. And so it's like, I don't think it's necessary that it can't happen in a local church or it can't happen in a local prayer gathering or it can't happen in a local midweek event like Asbury recently, but that there is this coming together. And I think we were, I mean, we were even talking this morning with staff. It's like um, 
why is it that some Sundays, even in local church context, like Resurrection Sunday, yeah. why is it that Resurrection Sunday seems to just bring people to life in a way that the normal week to week Sunday gathering doesn't? Why is it that people can come into Pentecost Sunday at the time we're recording this? It's the Monday we're having Pentecost Sunday is coming. Why is it that people can come into that environment who are in the room every week, but come with something different in their spirit or their sights that changes the entire atmosphere um, that can attract or pull more of heaven down in their posture. And so I think it is literally just that those Sundays usually have a higher vision, intentionality and directional clarity that we're chasing after one thing. And so that's what I love about conferences is that it, it provides that big directional clarity and pursuit to be real pointed and it's like, we are here for one thing and we are hungry for it. Um, and so I think that just provides a power in that, that isn't just the week to week grind of, of what church life or attending church or work can be. Yeah, I think the biggest, yeah, I guess what you're really bringing out is like expectation. There's something to be said about that. For sure. If you expect something to happen and really that's what, Jesus says time and time again about faith. Sure. Ask and you will receive. Sure. So if you, very specifically in that context, if you ask for the things of God, you better believe you're going to receive the things sure. of God. And so, the Bible says he's a good father who, who would give his children, like, if you ask for bread, going to give you a stone. Yeah. So we're partnering with God in that moment. I think, yeah, it's a powerful combination. So then really, and if we're maybe giving a more generous uh, take because we were talking about you know the people who are promoting conferences and maybe it's just them trying to build hype sure, or sure. get bodies in a room and there's no real spirit behind it but if we're to take like a more generous take on it maybe it's them actually trying to uh pass their people by building expectation yeah good of point. going hey it's going to change your life and maybe there isn't that nuance that they've given and that's probably the trash thing about you know 60 second instagram videos you can't really yeah, yeah. explain all of this you just can say in a sound bait in a sound bite hey it's going to change your life or hey god's going to really move and maybe that that intention isn't to make empty promises but it's more so trying to go hey expect this to happen sure. and if you expect it to happen then it's more likely to happen or god is going to move upon your expectation For sure. and also like i just go like man what's the hurt in in giving a couple of days to be involved in that in an environment of worship and mm. faith and learning like I mean, we carve out time just recently, like Taylor Swift was here. Yeah. And people would spend hours waiting to get tickets. People would fly into different cities. People would book hotel accommodation. And then we get to like church and it's like, oh, a couple days, $90. Like that's a bit of a stretch. It's like, stop it. Some people just spent like $6,000 to see someone sing some songs. Yeah. And we're going to gather. Yeah, we're going to sing songs, but we're worshiping the God who is alive that can do something. And so I just go, I mean, what's the harm anyway in having time in your schedule to just be there? Like whether it inspires something of you or not, whether it uh, ch chases you into a greater measure of something or not. It's like, there's, I just don't think there's anything wrong with just putting yourself in that environment for a night, two days, whatever the, the thing is that you're going to. I just think it's beneficial for the future of your life. And I suppose the real, because if we're looking at the context of, okay, let's just look at this conference specifically or this gathering or whatever the flip you want to call it yeah. at this point. Um, and I think this is just good advice or good thoughts to have with any gathering. You can utilize this for a Sunday. You sure. can utilize this for a camp. You can utilize this for a chapel or a prayer meeting mm -hmm. or even your own time with God. Um Whenever we've, and this might have been, I'll admit, because I've said this plenty of times, gone like, this one event is going to change your life. It's sure. going to be a catalyst moment. I've probably set the expectation and going, it's the event that's going to magically yeah, do good that point. for good you. Point. And I will own it and go, no, that was actually wrong. Hmm. I fair, fair. miscommunicated. I didn't give enough nuance in it because really what it is, is it's always been one, the Holy Spirit. Sure your expectation and maybe your self-determination of going, mm. I'm going to chase after this and God, I'm not going to let you go until I get it. It's like that, that um, Jacob slash um, Israel moment where he's 
wrestling with God and going, sure, yeah, sure. I'm not going to let you go until, you're, until you bless me. Great point. And I think there is something to be said about events, about conferences where we have that as just a mm. moment, as a date that we can set of going, God, point. on this date, I'm not going to let you go Great point. until you move in this area into my life, until I see breakthrough in this, until you take me to new levels of faith. Mm. But then they, what would happen if we had that as our everyday experience, if we oh. were able to have that self-determination sure. of going, you know what, God, I'm not going to let you go mm. until we see breakthrough in this area, until we see revival in the Gold Coast, until we see healing in this area. And what would that look like where we start to see not just a catalyst moment, sure. but if our entire life was just a nothing but seeing God just pour out his presence time and time mm. again throughout our world For sure. because of just our our itch of going, God, we're not going to accept anything less than this. That's very good. And I think that's where it comes back to like that idea at the start for me was like, I don't think a conference... Uh, like a conf- chasing conferences will never build something in your life. Yeah. But it does have the ability to, to boost maybe uh, a faith journey or to boost your faith levels. Or even if we're using like the agriculture analogy of scripture, it's like a conference culture won't necessarily like water the seeds of your life, but it can put some seeds in the soil of your heart. Yeah, And then your job is as you're planted in your local church, as you're pursuing God in your own way, you're in your own life group, you're like in converse with others, is there can be f- a watering of those things that maybe a conference has done. And I remember, dude, even some of the best conferences I've ever been to, like I can't even remember what the person spoke about. But yeah. I remember the spirit of the meeting. Yeah, Like I'm thinking back to last year at our INC conference, there was a speaker, his name was Tak Barna. And like... I, for the life of me, life of me, could not tell you what he said, where he preached from, what he spoke about. But I remember something was stirred in me from the spirit he carried and the, the heart for just warfare and faith and stirring for a move of God. Like he was just like so passionate and so almost like wholly violent for like the things of God. Mm. And I remember going away going, man, I can't go back to just complacency but i can't tell you what he preached on yeah but it was that atmosphere that was created in that environment has really spoke to me and so i think for us it's like our heart with this is not to necessarily go and where we actually probably have to be careful is going hey come to the conference and you're going to meet god yeah but it's like hey we're creating these few days to intentionally create an environment to chase after to be hungry uh and like who knows what you'll catch you might just find that God speaks to you. Like Mm. it just changes, I guess, the narrative rather than trying to be salesy. Yeah. Maybe is what we're trying to say. This is a good point. Yeah. Even our mission statement at Elevation is to mission or vision statement. I hardly know the difference between the two. It'll be mission. Mission. Yep. Thank you. Uh, To create environments that inspire intimacy with Christ. Like there is still that personal agency exactly. in it. 100%. And so really a conference is one of the maybe biggest, more obvious outworkings that we can create that. There's also something to be said. I think, yeah, with say INC, that was phenomenal because it gave you exposure to Correct. other people's faith where you Huge. probably wouldn't get it in other circumstances. Mm. We're able to get people from other ministries or other churches right. or from other walks of life and actually get to experience and see, oh, okay, the way that you hunger and thirst after God uh, is actually point. building something even into myself. Yep. I wouldn't have had if I, you know, just did the the routine uh, Sunday in, Sunday out sort of thing, but actually dedicated something else on top of all of that. Yeah, good point. And it's, it's the idea of like, you, you often get out what you put in. Mm. And so I think it's like what you said before. It's like, if it's more about when we talk online and we do the 60 second thing, it's like, maybe what we're trying to do is inspire a bit of expectation in people to go come in with a heart that believes God could do something. Cause, cause I know as a, as a preacher and for you, as you communicate as well, I'm sure you've realized this. It's mm-hmm. like, it's much easier to preach to people who are already there than it is to preach to people that you have to really work to get them to a point of like, I'm ready to, to go. I'm ready to receive. Yeah. And so it's like, I think conferences, because they're usually one-off, they're usually over and above, they usually have a bit more flair. People, You've also kind of, exp- like you've literally sacrificed something of yeah, yourself. You've put down an correct. expense of yourself. So it probably even sets you a little bit more yes. in that mindset as well. So I think people come in a bit 
more further along than you would just a normal Sunday where it's like I'm in the grind. I know where I sit. I know what time I rock up. It's mm. easy to just fall into that monotony, but a conference, it, it really does go over and above. So maybe people come in a bit more ready so that creates that atmosphere from the beginning. And so as a, as a preacher, it's like, man, I don't have to work to get you there. We just get to go and chase after it together. Yeah. So I think that's sometimes in the power of those environments is not necessarily the event, but the environment it says, and you nailed it. Our mission statement is to create environments. It's not to chase you into them. Yeah. Like I, I feel like a lot of our discipleship at times, you just be trying to chase people into, into faith with Jesus or chase people into reading their Bible or chase people into seeking God. But it's also like that personal responsibility. I'm going to create an environment and you decide whether you want to jump in on that. Mm. We're going to create an environment with a conference. We really do believe, at least I'll personify it. I really do believe God is going to do something great. I really do believe people will catch something. I really do believe uh, it's going to be incredible. I really do believe the gap between heaven and earth is going to be strangely dim. I really do believe it's going to be supernatural. As does every pastor that probably holds an event. Yeah. But... It's your choice whether you want to be there or not. And I think there's freedom as a leader to go, that's fine. If you don't want to opt in, that's actually cool. But what have you got to lose? Yeah. Imagine if you actually got wind of that. Imagine. One of the, and we need to probably wrap up soon. Yeah. One of the best pieces of wisdom, now in hindsight, I probably didn't think about it much, but when mm. I was a teenager, my youth pastor said, the thing with conferences is that it will never build your relationship with God. Totally. But it can maybe pack in like a few months sure. worth of building yep. into a few days. Great. So you're not going to expect for everything to come together for you to be just an absolute zen master to sure. you know be the uh i'm not sure if zen is the best choice of word <laughs> it's a bit new too new agey isn't it anyway like you're not it. you're not going to become um the, the best. dallas willard overnight yeah exactly we'll, we'll exactly back, yep. um but there is still something to say that you know that the, there is true genuine value yeah. that you can receive that whatever sacrifice you might make to attend this conference if you lean in and if you actually have that expectation into it then you're going to receive far more than what so you true. end up giving towards it absolutely um i guess within this specific conference what do you think are some ways that we can pray or build that expectation within ourselves yeah good question i i think it's often our hearts are hard and so mm. I think I think the thing I love about prayer is it does really it's a work, but it is a work that's worth it in that it does change us. I I don't know who says it, but there's that quote where it's like prayer doesn't change God, it changes us. Mm. And so I think prayer is a good way. But if you're praying into it, man, I would just be going God, like I just want to meet with you. That that's been my prayer for this God. I want to meet with you. I want to encounter the reality of your kingship, your rule, your reign, and and the word I've been i've been saying is that i want heaven and earth to seem like there is no separation um and so i think for me i'm very visual mm. and so i'm just i just want to see those two kingdoms collide and for a moment in time it's like we're back in the garden yeah for a moment in time it's like god's walking with us for a moment in time it's like he's there tangibly physically in the room and so i think prayer is a big one uh like pick up your word and read it, yeah. um, but be excited and be okay to be excited. Talk about it, be excited, talk about it, be excited, pray. Um, and so I think, yeah, I, I think the more you can go into it with your heart soil soft and stirred is you're going to be there at the beginning and you're going to be ready and God is genuinely going to show up in a great way. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think we're, we're really wrestling ourselves over the planning of this like we really have been starting to get into the details sure. of this and actually really trying to go oh man let's make sure that exactly what you just shared absolutely let's keep that at the forefront of our mind let's not have any secondary ideas let's make sure that every single moment yep. there is opportunity for that kind of experience in it great. um and i'm really excited so i guess to bring it short does a conference bring a revival it's yes but no <laughs> but also yes yes i'm happy with that that's a pretty good way to cap it off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, next episode we've got um, Alex Tan. Looking forward to that. That's going to be incredible. Yep. How to crush your 20s. Love that. He's got a lot of insight on that, so I'm really excited to hear that one. Great. Um, catch you later. See you next time.